Why were you so bothered uh, when you found out Forbes was adding you to the list of billionaires? Well, a lot of people associate success with how much money you have, or if you're like a billionaire over here, okay, then maybe you're something different than everybody else. So when I started making money, it was like, well, you know what, uh, how about we don't talk about what I have, what I do with what I have, and you'll sometimes realize I got a whole bunch of money, you know, but I do good things with it, I didn't mind that at all. So when people call me, for and, example. And you've earned it. Oh, I've earned yeah. it, and I, and, and I help others too along the way. Right. But then, so if you take a look, Bloomberg, I think, has me at 5.2 billion. I think uh, Forbes has me at 3.2 or 3.4 billion. Someone else has me at six and a half billion, okay? And main reason is I won't tell anybody anything. And if I went to Steve Forbes one day, because I know Steve, what? I said, Steve, get me off the list. I can't do it, JP. <laughs> he says, can you just tell people what we have? At least we'll, we'll get you up there. I said, I don't want to get up there. I want to get off your list. They can't do it. Uh, have you gone about deciding uh, where you want to have homes? Well, the home thing came about where I bought a house that was great, and then I moved someplace else, and I bought a place there. But each time I bought a place, the people that would take care of it were so nice that I, I didn't want to get rid of them. And I was doing really well, so I thought, well, in my own mind was, I would just keep the money in real estate, and it would grow, and it'd be like a future profit thing for me. And if I get something else, I'd like the people again. I didn't want to get rid of them. And then once I, or twice I bought a house because it was such a good deal. But then the people take care of it was so nice. And I knew it would only grow. It drove me nuts, okay? Like right oh, now, oh, really? I was like, what am I doing this? I mean, nuts were, am I out of my mind? But I realized, no. I love these people, I could afford it, and the, the land appreciates anyways, the house appreciates, so I'm just gonna do this longer. Uh, all right, so how many homes? More than one. <laughs> More than one. More than one. Um, how, how about um, your favorite destinations where you have homes? Uh, some of my favorite are Hawaii. I have a home that I built in Bali in Hawaii, and I love that very, very, very much. Uh, obviously, here in Austin, I'm right here on the Kalo River. I love this place. I, I like my Malibu house a, a whole lot. So explain the design intricacies and the extent of your involvement in designing some of your homes. Sure. My house in Hawaii is a Balinese house. I was in Bali with my friend Paul Mitchell many, many years back, about a year before he died, two years before he died, we were there together. And I met this fellow there who worked with people in the interior of Bali, way back in the jungles, that built these temples and houses. They lived on dirt floors. They were really nice people. And I thought, you know what, there's this little place in Hawaii that I'm buying this, this land that was up for sale, and I started making some money right on the water. Uh, and it was just a couple lots down from where my friend Paul had bought a, a piece of land there in a little house. And I said, you know what, I have this little house. I love a Balinese house. So I said, guys, so we got pencils out. We kind of designed a little bit there, and then they took over. What do you want? And so forth. Then they would mail to me at the time, back and forth, pictures of how it came along. They take snapshots of it. So they were 90% of how the house came out, 10% me. But it's a Balinese house and it's so cool. It's like, uh, to me, it's one of the coolest houses on the planet. Okay, wait, how, how do you build the house in Bali and get it to Hawaii? Very simple. We built it in Bali. They, arrest, they erected it with wooden pegs, numbered every single piece, took it down, wrapped it, put on a barge to Jakarta, by ship to Hilo, by truck to the Kona side. I brought over 30 Balinese carpenters. I got permits for every one of them, paid them the same as American carpenters were paid. I want everyone to get paid equal. They went back the equivalent of a million or even though it wasn't a million dollars. They and 50 American carpenters, it took them two years to put this house back up again. They would all did it by numbers, like the bridge has so many numbers, under B bridge, bridge one, bridge two, right? It was all put up by numbers. They put it up by each piece was numbered. Plus the Balinese who built it, 30 of them were over there. 280 built it, by the way, 280 Balinese, but 30 came over to resurrect it again. I think you have three uh, planes of your own. Um, how key is private travel to uh, your life now? I couldn't travel the way I do 
whether it's for business or philanthropy, if I didn't have a private jet, there's no way I could do it. And the only reason I have three private jets right now is one is more of a long range jet, which I haven't used that much, so we lease it out during the year. The other one they use all the time is the one I use all the time. My third jet, which is a smaller jet, one of the first ones I got, the market right now sucks. It's at a bottom, so if I sold it, I'd lose too much money. So my partner and I are just sitting on it. We've been sitting on it for a few years, hoping it's gonna come around and we can at least break even on it. But we may have to sell it at a loss. When you've had as much professional success as you've had, how do you avoid your kids feeling a sense of entitlement? Oh, it's how they're brought up. If you were eight years old, your weekly allowance was $8. If you were 13 years old, it's $13. Uh -huh. And then my son came up to me when I gave him 13 bucks, so he said, Dad, times have changed. For $13, I could get in the movie and get one popcorn. That's it, and I'm broke. I have no money left. <laughs> so I braced them to 20. <laughs> you know? But they were brought up, you know, not frugally, but just brought up, you know, just to respect money. And, and all my kids work. Alexis was asked at a race, at a racing thing, and, you know, what's it like to be the daughter of a billionaire in racing? And Alexis says, you know what? I wouldn't know. It's great being JP's daughter. I love my dad. But I can't equate it to a billionaire because I don't spend his money, it's his money.